And while Russia continues its push in eastern Ukraine, at least two people were killed in an overnight missile strike in the northeastern Kharkiv region. It comes after at least four were confirmed dead in a strike late Friday that hit a playground in the southeastern city Mykolaiv. Recent attacks have also left thousands of people without power or running water in central Ukraine as Russia continues to target the country's energy infrastructure. Well, for some of the latest, we can cross now to Kyiv and speak to our correspondent, Emmanuel Shaz. Emmanuel, what else can you tell us about this latest wave of Russian strikes? Well, those strikes just uh, show just, uh, you know, how the air defense here is still inf insufficient to uh, tackle, to uh, secure uh, the sky. We see that it's sufficient uh, to in uh, downing most of the missiles, most of the drones that are being sent by Russia. But uh, for each wave of missiles, for each wave uh, of drones being sent against Ukrainian cities, there's always one uh, or two or some missiles or drones that go, that uh, pass through. It was the case yesterday in Mykolaiv talked about those uh, four people who died uh, when a playground uh, was hit by a missile. Uh, among the dead, there's a 12-year-old boy uh, who, who died on the spot yesterday. Overnight, there was another attack uh, with drones on the regions of Poltava, where a central power plant, uh, thermal power plant was hit, also on Chernihiv region. And here in Kyiv, we heard explosions as well. And this explains why Ukraine and its, its government is still, still asking to its allies, its Western allies for more air defense systems. A few, um, a few weeks ago, we were hearing Volodymyr Zelensky saying that uh, Ukraine needed at least, uh, at the very least, seven uh, Patriot air defense systems to secure the skies above the biggest uh, cities of Ukraine. But in reality, a few days ago, he said that in order to 100% secure that sky, uh, Ukraine would need 25 air defense systems. Uh, he didn't say exactly how many systems were already here because he said, well, strategically, it's not something they can reveal the Ukrainian government can reveal. However, we see day in, day out uh, that uh, there's no sufficient uh, air defense uh, to cover 100 percent, to secure 100 percent the sky. Uh, we witness it every day. We witness it when we hear explosions here in Kyiv, but also uh, in frontline cities and cities closer to the regions uh, where uh, the front line is located. Mykolaiv is one of them. Kharkiv uh, is one of them. And those explosions also explain why Ukraine reiterates every day its calls to get the authorities authorization from the U.S. in particular and Germany to strike with long-range Western missiles within Russia, especially on military air bases where the planes carrying the missiles that are striking Ukraine uh, could be targeted. Would Ukraine be able and be allowed by its allies uh, to uh, target uh, deep into to, to, to shoot um, their own long-range missiles provided by the West to shoot directly into Russian territory? Given that, as you said, you know, there's growing concern about the capacities of Ukraine's air defenses, uh, perhaps you could speak a little bit just about uh, what the mood is like then for, for civilians in Ukraine. Well, it's a very particular. You remember uh, only a few days ago here in Kyiv, we've experienced uh, uh, a shelling of a, a children's hospital. And, you know, uh, there is that false sense of normalcy most of the time here in Kyiv. We have uh, air red alerts quite often. We do hear explosions quite often. But more often than not, it is the work of air defense. And we are uh, pretty much uh, safer than elsewhere in the country here in the capital, just as in Western cities uh, in Ukraine. But the past few months have shown that uh, Russia Russia really would target uh, civilian infrastructures as well as essential infrastructures. Russia has destroyed uh, most of the thermal, uh, um, the energy capacity of Ukraine. So the mood is, uh, you know, uh, that of fear and of worry. We have a daily power cuts that last a very long time. There's only a few hours power even here in the capital uh, per day, uh, per person, per household. So it's very hard to uh, to just ignore what is happening. And here, keeping in mind that we are in, in a rather safe uh, city compared to the front line. So there's a pretty uh, gloom uh, atmosphere, pretty, uh, you know, uh, downcast uh, mood here, especially uh, not only because of the uh, electricity power cut, but also uh, because Ukrainians follow uh, closely what is happening in the West in terms of elections, for example, the U.S. elections, because they know that uh, past November, uh, whatever happens in the United States will determine uh, the future of U.S. aid to Ukraine. So uh, uh, there's a lot of fear, a lot of worry. And and uh, overall, a very gloom atmosphere here uh, in Ukraine. All right, Emmanuel, thank you so much uh, for that update. That's our correspondent there, Emmanuel Shaz, uh, reporting from Kyiv.